Hello, my name is Kyle Borgett. We have created this video to help users understand how the levelized cost of electricity is calculated in the Integrated Environmental Control Model and how the financing structure is integral to the result. This video is intended to be a primer on the financial models used in the IUCM and should not be seen as a replacement for the more detailed documentation. There are a few things worth noting about the financial underpinnings of the IUCM before I begin this demonstration. The financial calculation structure is based on the EPRI Technical Assessment Guide and the equipment capital costs used in the IUCM are periodically updated to reflect the most recent release of the NETL bituminous baseline report. Consequently, if you were to build a plant in the IACM of equivalent specifications to any scenario plant investigated in the baseline report, the cost and performance results will be in accordance with one another. The levelized cost of electricity is an important metric which is used frequently to compare the costs of various forms of electrical generation technologies. This general formula denotes the physical and financial parameters which comprise the calculation in the IACM. For this example, I want to mainly focus on what is commonly referred to as the carrying charge, which comprises the terms highlighted in red. This is a part of the LCOE, which includes the capital cost of the plant and can be affected substantially by the financial assumptions. Let's begin by starting a new session. We'll use a pulverized coal plant, which meets the new emissions requirements for any new source performance plant. Navigate to set parameters and then select base plant. Although it should be noted that all of the top tabs would have a similar screen. Next we'll select capital costs. This screen presents us with a list of parameters which are split roughly into two groups. The first group, which has units of percent process facility cost is a list of cost adders which are used to increase the bare erected cost of the facility to reflect the expected total cost of that component. The second group, under the heading of pre-production costs, is another set of cost adders used to provide ample liquidity to the facility to cover startup and miscellaneous costs during the period of months stipulated in rows 10 and 11. All of these parameters are used to help answer the question of just how much capital is required for each component. In addition to the costs listed here, royalty fees can also add a cost if a technology is being licensed from a particular manufacturer. In the IECM, the amount of capital required is calculated based upon the method outlined in the EPRI tag. Direct and indirect construction costs, along with the cost of equipment and materials, combine to yield a process facilities cost. Engineering and home office fees, along with contingencies and royalties, are added to the process facilities cost to yield the total plant cost. Allowances for funds used during construction and interest accrued over the time horizon are then added to the total plant cost to yield the total plant investment. Lastly, the remaining project capital, such as owner's costs and consumables inventory, are added to arrive at the total plant requirement for the project. Let's turn our attention to the overall plant tab and then select the financing tab. The first two parameters were discussed at length in the introduction to costs and financial parameters video and will not be discussed thoroughly again here. Pre-tax discount rate, however, is a very important parameter in determining the carrying charge so let's review quickly how this value is calculated using the information in rows 8 through 13. Also known as the weighted cost of capital, the pre-tax discount rate is calculated by properly weighting the return rates of the debt and equity instruments in accordance with the percentage of capital which is to be financed with each. The IUCM uses a straight line depreciation schedule across the economic lifetime of the plant. No parameter is explicitly dedicated to depreciation because an assumption has been built into the financial model whereby the salvage value of the plant is equal to the decommissioning costs, thus producing a net cash flow of zero in the final year of the plant's lifetime. The annual depreciation of the plant is considered a negative annual cash flow and therefore does reduce the quantity of taxes paid each year over the book life of the plant. Also, 
The final row, the financial screen, does allow you to input an investment tax credit if you are curious to observe what the impact of such a policy would be on plant finances. The IECM calculates an effective tax rate based upon either default or specified tax rates for federal and state income taxes using the following formula to avoid excessive taxation of revenues. For a constant dollar analysis, the annual carrying charges must then be discounted according to our calculated discount rate for the financial book life of our project. The first two equations combine to give a sum total of all discounted carrying charges through a specified year. If, however, I want to pay a constant carrying charge across the life of the plant, I need to invoke the idea of an annuity. The fourth equation shows that by dividing the second by the third, a levelized reverse annuity, i.e. the amount of plant capital costs required to be paid back each year, can be created through any year of operation desired. If you were to create annuity for the carrying charges, where the number of years in question is equal to the book life of the plant, then you would have mathematically defined the fixed charge factor. This also makes practical sense in that the fixed charge factor is the percentage of the total capital requirement which must be paid off each year in order to pay off the debt incurred to build the plant with interest. Perhaps the most important parameter for determining the levelized cost of electricity is not a financial parameter at all, but rather the plant's capacity factor. The capacity factor determines the amount of megawatt hours produced each year and directly scales the magnitude of the denominator in the carrying charge equation. This direct scaling is the case for distributing the carrying charges per megawatt, as seen here, but is also true for fixed operations and maintenance costs. Finally, the levelized cost of electricity can then be calculated by summing the carrying charges, fixed and variable operations and maintenance, and fuel charges incurred per megawatt hour. We have now come full circle, since this is simply another way of expressing the same equation with which we opened this presentation. Hopefully you now have a deeper understanding of the levelized cost of electricity calculation performed by the IECM. Remember that the documentation can be consulted to aid you with any advanced economic analysis you are interested in performing. Good luck with your modeling efforts, and thanks for watching.